Okay. All right, so we're further into the Reason Rally now, and I met Matthew. Matthew's from New York, and he is the, the co-president. Uh, the vice the president. vice president. Of the, uh, a the Atheist and Agnostic um, Society of Cornell. At Cornell, okay. Yeah, so, so you came all the way down for the Reason Rally? Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I have family around here, but yeah, so okay. it's kind of a dual thing. I see. The mental states I mean, are... I mean, it becomes a little bit complicated. You can talk about um, brain states as causing mental states, and that might make some sense. I personally think that it's but what a little I'm bit hearing odd. You though, is what I'm, I guess what I'm getting at is this, is that we have as foundations here, we're stardust, we're apes, we're cosmically, broccoli, your brain is fizzing, uh -huh. right? And why should anybody say, we need to fight for this kind of brain fizz, uh -huh. versus over here a person is fizzing this way, why, why well, is one brain fizz the, more well, than... Well, that's why I brought up the, uh, well, in terms of resolving disputes, that's one question. In terms of why, within one framework, I would believe anything at all. Again, I think that it's a result of a combination of evolved social instincts. So it's and just random. Could, it's it not have, random. It could have Evolution evolved the other way. Random. It, could, it could have evolved the other way. It could have evolved in a different way, and it does evolve rationality, in a way in other social species. So it, ev evolution could have brought us to irrationality as the norm. Well, you, we, we were talking about morality, not rationality. I'm talking about the, the information and the fizz going on in your brain. So over uh -huh. here we have, here's, if I use your foundations, uh -huh. if I take atheism, say, Dawkins, naturalist and materialism, and I look out across right now, I see a bunch of bags of biological stuff uh -huh. that are fizzing chemically, uh -huh. thoughts uh -huh. that say, reason, reason, uh -huh. and they say we should all hold to the same kind of reasoning and, and everything else going on over here, but that's the foundations. Yes. As a Christian, I look at over here, I say these are not just, this is not just stardust, or not just bags of stuff, the made the Imago Dei, everyone here has value and dignity, including you. We, can, we should fight for universal laws and changing and variant laws of logic because this world is not just matter and motion. There are immaterial aspects to our being. Well, I mean, you, 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 the things that you're saying seem to represent a hunger for an absolute foundation on which to base reason what and rationality. What I'm saying is you don't have any philosophical justification for either science, you, logic, you, or no, you, you don't have any kind of a, an absolute basis that's correct. You do. I mean, ever right. since... Ever, I mean, well, you, you believe you do, but you're wrong. Well, well no, I, I actually I, I actually can demonstrate to you, even by your own reasoning right now, uh -huh. that the God that, I, that you and I both know exists because your reasoning, according to the Christian world, you're acting as though their nature is uniform, but you can't justify that given your atheism. No, but I, I take uncertainty as being a, as being a basic epistemological position. So only well, if I, uh, uncertainty. uncertainty. So only if I wanted to claim that I was capable of having certain visit, uh, 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 assertions, yeah. I, would I need to? Uh, would I need to? So you can have no certainty. That's correct. Are but, you certain about that? Um, that's an interesting uh, well, uh, point. Did but, I hear, real quick, did I hear you earlier say that it's objectively true that there's a, no objective truth? Didn't you say that earlier? Uh, yes. Okay, so yeah, that see, so totally you see, contradicts you see what you, you just said. said uh -huh. two statements. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm absolutely yeah. certain I can have no certainty. Uh, no, I, no, I didn't. I didn't say I was absolutely certain. Well, um, you said I'm no, certain. No, no. So uh, just I. So you can have certainty when you have, in terms of a, uh, a, a self-contained logical system. So, uh, do you know the, the, the distinction between but analytic the, but, and synthetic but you propositions? Told me that, but you told me that laws of logic are just results of chemicals going on in our brain. That's an interesting question. Um, so, for example, mathematics uh, is, uh, the, 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 it, it's an interesting philosophical question of why mathematics works so well and why it, well, I, I why, why why it does. Why it reflects you the believe God. you know why it, well, it does. Well, an interesting yeah. thing, though, Matthew, is that you're living right now, standing on a Christian view of reality and how you're living, but you're denying it with your atheism. You're uh, fighting for things like uniformity in nature, laws of logic and morality, but you have no justification given your atheism. Uh, well, I mean, Christian, uh, Christian, uh, you know, uh, intel intel intellectual theology was developed on a basis of Platonic and Aristotelian Roman philosophy. So, I mean, well, that, no, that, that's a, that's a, that's an authorit authoritarian claim. That's not. It's not a root Well, I mean, in, ter in terms of my basic epistemological and ontological positions, I am. What are you, I, rationalist? I am more. I, um, I am a scientific realist. I believe that uh, 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 that, uh, that uh, synthetic assertions about the universe are. Always, uh, always open to to revision through further evidence. So laws I don't of logic believe aren't that necessarily universal. Laws of logic are analytical, so but they're they self-contained. Are they universal? Uh, laws of logic are a self-contained system of propositions. Should I should I be listening to you right now, looking for inconsistencies, or no? Um, because you and I don't share the same brain. Uh huh. 
So how 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 are this this appeal you're making to these universal laws of logic? How does that lead from your brain to mine? We don't share the same brain. How is that a universal truth? Um, well, we actually have very similar brains, uh, but, but we don't share the same brain. Yeah. You're fizzing atheistic thoughts right now. I'm uh -huh. fizzing Christian theistic thoughts. Uh -huh. But you're trying to appeal to universal laws of logic. But given atheism, all you are is matter in motion. I don't understand what the point where's you're the to make universal is. law of logic. Can I touch it? Um, well, that's an interesting question. Um, the thing is that um, there's no reason to believe that you know unusually intelligent apes that evolved on, a, on, on, on one planet in the universe should have the hardware to be able to solve you know the basic questions of the universe so uh, trying to appeal to me as a scientific rationalist to try to answer all of the basic and deep philosophical questions about the universe well you're living is, but is, thing, though, is Matthew, not realistic well Matthew the thing is though is you're living as though these laws of logic are universal and unchanging and necessary uh -huh. But you have no justification for your appeal to them. No now, ultimate Christian, justification. Yes. Right. So you're you're fighting for logic, which you can't justify. That's as a right. Christian, I have a basis for logic and science and morality. Yeah, it's so you're fallacious one. Well, again, you don't have a problem with fallacious things in your worldview. Uh, no, I don't believe that. You I don't can't believe, justify universals. I don't. I, I don't think that you can have any ultimate justification for so, anything. So no. you can't call what I said just fallacious. Uh, within the framework that I'm operating on, I am calling Your it fallacious. Is. I am not saying that it has an, any kind of necessary are ultimate fallacious reality. Things, are fallacious things uh, allowed in your worldview or not allowed? Um, they are just fallacious. Are they allowed or not allowed? Um, so if I make the assertion that a that uh, an argument is correct, right. the word correct right. has meaning within a self-contained logical system. Right. And, and in, so in, within in that the, system, by definition, a fallacious this logical argument is not system, correct. This logical but that's part of what it, the, the, meaning, the, the meaning of the word correct is. The logical is. system that you're referring to, Matthew, does that exist only in your mind or is that universal? Uh, I, I think that, that that's related to the question of why things like mathematics work. And, and I don't know. World, I'm not a philosopher. You don't know, so, but you live as though they are important. <laughs> uh, I, I do, you do, do you do math as you as you do know? I uh, yes. Do you do logic as if you do know? Um, oh, so that's an interesting question. No, I don't think so. I mean, basically, I, I think that you can have uh, uh, operating assumptions um, that you can then work under without making any kind of a, without making a strong claim right. for their that's, you know, that's absolute statement necessary right, that's, foundation. That statement right now that you just made, did that have a necessary foundation or was it just random? Uh, what I'm saying no, is no, it certainly didn't have a necessary I foundation. I, I, could have, I, I could have died yeah. five, ten minutes ago. Well, I mean that. I don't, I don't yeah. see that you have any justification for the laws of logic you're appealing. You don't have ultimate justification. There you go. No. So, so yeah. don't use them. Yeah. Uh, well, no, I, the, I, I reject the idea that you have to have ultimate justification to do so, it. So you would have to live in the world with no justification. No ultimate justification. Ultimate justification for logic, no ultimate justification That's for uniformity right. in nature, no ultimate justification yeah. for morality. So the, di the, the, the difference, though, then, is that you, uh, uh, I am saying that uh, we all have to live in that world. And that right. you are just basically telling yourself a story no. that allows yourself to believe that you do have an no, ultimate Matthew, justification. No, Matthew, I do. Matthew, you don't. the difference between you and I. You mentioned a moment ago you don't have certainty. Christians do can have certainty about things that God has revealed. We have what's called a revelational epistemology. Right. And so we can know things for certain because God ultimately enters into world history and he tells us. Right. But in your worldview, you're reduced to absurdity in your reasoning and your science. And Within your worldview, you are asserting that ultimate uh, foundations are possible and, and necessary and but desirable. But you're living like they are, but you reject not your, your creator's existence. No, I'm not living like they are because I, 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 I'm, I am accept that I can operate under uh, you know, operational hypotheses by that faith. are not certain. Um, uh, so you live by it, faith. It's not faith because I don't claim to be certain about it. it I would have to be you, certain about faith. Matthew, do you know that tomorrow is going to be like today and uh, with nature being uniform? No, no, that's Hume and I don't. There's no okay. inferential basis for inference. So, do you have an answer for Hume's problem? No, there's no answer for Hume. No I, I have an answer. Well, yeah, okay. and I mean, lots of people have tried to answer do you, do you Hume. Know why, <laughs> do you know how a Christian would answer the uniformity of nature problem? Uh, 
uh, it, it's uniform because God makes it that way. Because God has revealed himself and he carries the universe along to the destination. That's why science is all built upon a creationist view of reality. Yeah, and I, I just think that any, any, any particular person who claims to have had access to revelation is probably yeah. deluded or lying. Well, that's that's a claim, but it's okay to be deluded and lying in your worldview or stardust. I, it is, it, it, the, the word okay is a moral claim. I'm just saying that it's probably wrong. Probably wrong, but could be right. Absolutely. Could okay, right. so there's no certainty. Nope. Absurdities are allowed. <laughs> uh, I don't know what you mean by that. Well, I, you, you said that it could be either way. Yes. So absurdities could be allowed. I don't know what you mean by that. It could be. It could be okay to just be absurd and live absurd. Uh, well, I'm not going to stop you. Right. I'm, I'm asking right. Matthew. Yeah. Is that, is, that, is that an intelligent way to live? I. Uh, that's value judgment, and I already said within my value system, I do think that having ac as accurate views as possible is important. Okay, so. well, I'll ask you one more question, yeah. and I'll let you go. Okay. Um, the uniformity in nature, it's necessary to do science, it's necessary to do all that we just did. It's desirable if you if you desire to have accurate Well, we can't do science if we don't have a, a rationally intelligible universe. You, you, you can do science, you can, you can uh, uh, have an operating assumption that the universe is uniform, right. and uh, the, the fact that it has worked so well so far is certainly evidence to believe that it is. Right. I mean, it could be that 100 light years from now, circular, uh, it, it, no, yeah, you're right, yes. and that it does not provide, and that's why it doesn't provide an absolute foundation, because the there's no answer to Hume. That's right. I have an answer to Hume. And I've yeah, and it's just a, it's but, just a silly but one. But, well, no, that's my answer. And yeah. the interesting thing is, is that you're living in the same world I am, appealing to the uniformity, but you have only blind faith. Uh, I, except that it's not faith because I'm not certain. With right, the but confidence? You, you, Would you, you say just, it's confidence? Yeah. Yeah, I, I say I have a just. I, I, th I think that I have a rational justification for believing in uniformity because, as I said, science works quite well. Right. That's what Bertrand Russell would say to that. You're begging the question because you're using the past uniformity in nature that's to right. justify the Well, that's future, not Bertrand Russell. Not. That's Hume. No, Bertrand Russell in Problems in Philosophy said exactly that. Yeah, but that, that is what Hume's argument right, is. Right, but Bertrand that Russell past, would, would, would say to what you're saying. He answered you. He said the person that appeals to past uniformity to justify the future is arguing viciously. No, that's secular. that's right. And so, right. but what that what so that mean, you know what that means is that you can't be certain. No, but that doesn't mean that you can't he have was a asking justification. For a justification, and he said you well, can't give it. Well, but but at that time in philosophy, I mean, what they were arguing about was this idea of whether or not you could create this this ultimate just this ultimate foundation on which to base reality to because. Well, only if you're operating. I think that this is basically a hangover from a religious worldview. Well, well, I mean, it's part right of our. Now, right yeah. now, you're standing here. Yeah. Right? Did you eat food today? Yeah. Did you eat water today? Uh huh. Brush your teeth today? Yeah. Yes? You're breathing air today? Uh huh. So you're living, assuming the uniformity in nature, yes. every moment of your life. This entire conversation has assumed it. Yes. And you haven't thought you're just going to float away to the sky, no. have you? No. And, so and, how come how come you never thought that? Well, because our brains evolved in an environment where gravity existed. I'm asking existed. you for the justification for gravity holding you down now, like it did yesterday. Well, what I can't, what, what there is not, and Hume showed this, is any kind of an ultimate justification where I've you can be certain. You, I've already given you the, the biblical answer. To well, this. right, and, and there's all, but there's all kinds of non-biblical answers the, 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 to it, and I don't think any of them make sense. The interesting thing is here is your atheism has left you with no justification for the preconditions of intelligibility for uniformity. No, no, no. no ultimate justification. Right. Right. No, no ultimate justification. There you go. Right. Thanks, man. That's right. Okay. Thanks for the conversation. Man. No problem. Nice to meet you. All right. Okay.